major, minor, major seventh, minor seventh, dominant seventh. If you know those five arpeggio shapes as a bass player, that's gonna cover like 95% of the songs you're ever going to encounter. So today what I wanna do is go through all five of those arpeggio shapes, see how each one kind of builds off the other one. It's really not that complicated and make sure that your arpeggio game is strong. And before we get started, if you're in to bass and more beginner and intermediate bass lessons, make sure you hit that subscribe button. That's what we do here. We'll be doing a lot of it, so I hope you join me. All right, first off, we should probably talk about what an arpeggio is. Now, in the context of a band, you probably have a guitar player, maybe a piano player, a keyboard player. Outside of those people taking solos, those instruments are playing, uh, say, a C chord, and they're strumming, they're strumming the notes, playing all the notes at the same time. So you might have a guitar player playing a C, or a C7, and they're playing all those notes at the same time. Well, what an arpeggio is, is when you play each of the notes of the chord one at a time. And as a bass player, that's what we're doing. We're outlining the chords with the chord tones. So a guitar player might be strumming the whole chord. Well, while he's strumming that chord, all of the notes of that chord are available for us to play in our bass line. That's why it's so important to understand all of these arpeggios because depending on which chord the band is playing, that is going to dictate what notes are going to fit right in to that bass line. So today we're gonna to work off the C, we're gonna do C major, C minor, C major seven, all that good stuff. So we're gonna start right here on the third fret on the A string, and that's a C right there. And as we're talking about arpeggios, we're gonna be talking about scale degrees based on the major scale. So if you don't know the major scale, I would definitely make sure you know that. The major scale is made out of seven unique notes. Right here, four, five, six, seven, and then the root again. And each one of those notes are numbered. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or one to the root again. And we're gonna be saying things like the major arpeggio is one, three, and five, indicating it's the first, third, and fifth scale degree in the major scale. So if you don't know that, you may wanna pause this video and check out, I've linked a video in the description about the major scale that you can check out and then you can come back here. All right, so let's go ahead and start with the major arpeggio. Let's go ahead and get the strings up on the screen for us. Here's our headstock here, drawing some frets. Now, like I said, we are going to start on the C. So the C is the third fret, A string, that's the C. And we talked about the major scale being the kind of basis for all of these. So let's write out the major scale here. So in the key of C, you have the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and we're gonna call this eight slash one. So you know that that's where the scale starts over. So that eight slash one is also a C, it's just an octave higher than the C we started on. So uh, when you hear people call it an eight, uh, that's kind of indicating it's an a octave higher than where you started, but it is technically uh, the same root note. So the major arpeggio is made up of the one, three, and five. So when somebody's playing a C major chord, they're playing the one, three, and five of the major scale, which happens to be C, E, and G uh, in the key of C. But once again, like we talked about, C is here, if we want to do this in E, you just move the root note to whatever you want to play. But back to the C, the major arpeggio shape is going to be the one, the three, and the five. So we're gonna have a note right here, we're gonna have a note right here, and we're gonna have a note right here. Now, something to think about is that the C, this 8-1 is also a C, so a lot of times that's also kind of taken in to account for the major arpeggio shape. So what we have is we have the one here, the three, so one fret, uh, or sorry, one string towards the floor, one fret towards the headstock is the three from where we started. And then from that three, you go one, two, three frets over, and that's gonna be your five. So you have one, three, five, and then we can grab that octave. And from the five, we go one string towards the floor, same fret, and that octave is right there. So that is your major arpeggio, one, three, five octave. So now let's talk about the major seventh. Now this is technically a four 
note chord. A major chord is a three note chord or a triad. Adding the seventh adds another note to the chord, making it a four note chord. But it's as easy as it probably sounds. To make a major seventh, all you have to do is add the seventh degree of the major scale to the chord, and then you have a major seventh chord. So if we go ahead and look at our uh, major scale here and what we already have highlighted, the one, three, and five, what we're gonna do is add that seventh right in there. And now we have the one, three, five, seven, and then that octave again. So what that would look like is one, three, five. Now the seven lives one fret towards the headstock, further towards the headstock from the octave here, right? So we just go one fret back and that's the seven. Now that's also up here. And then there's that C. So we have root three, five, seven octave. So the major seven, and I'm just gonna shorthand that with the capital M seven, equals the one, three, five, and seven of the major scale. So now let's talk about the dominant seven. The dominant seven is really popular in blues, and so you're gonna hear it a lot, uh, that, that dominant seven actually is when you take the seventh of the major seven and flat it, we have the major seventh right here. We're going to flat it by one fret, creating a flat seven. So a dominant seven equals the one, three, five, and a flat seven. Now the flat seven is not technically in the major scale, and that flat seven is gonna make it sound a little more bluesy, a little more kind of minory. Let's go ahead and hear what that sounds like with the C. So we have one, three, five, flat seven, octave. Now, and so that is the dominant seven arpeggio. So we take away the seven right there. We add a flat seven right here. We'll go ahead and highlight that. And there you go. That is where you, that is your dominant seven arpeggio. So now let's go ahead and jump into the minor arpeggios. So a couple things that the major and minor arpeggios have, all five of these arpeggios that you're learning today are all gonna have the same root note and they're all going to have the same fifth, which is awesome. So we can actually highlight the one and the five. Those you already know, they're already in the bag. You've already got them, you've got that already done, okay? So now we just have to figure out how do we make something a minor? Well, that minor tonality comes from the third of the chord. So in our major chords, we had just a regular third. Now in a minor chord, you actually take that third and similarly to what we did with that seventh when we made a dominant seven, we actually go a half step, we flat it a half step, and we make it a minor third. So our three here, this guy right here, we're gonna go back half a step and we're gonna make a flat third and that's going to make our minor arpeggio. It's gonna be the one flat three. Let's go ahead and highlight that and the five. Now what gets interesting is our fingering is gonna be a little bit different for this one. You can definitely play it like this, how I have it on the page, but as you're, as you're learning these, I'd actually recommend you play this note up here because this note here, right next to the two, that note right there is the same as the one on the D string. But if you start that arpeggio with your ring finger, now you notice when I was playing the major arpeggios, I started that with my middle finger. And I took the middle finger and then I was able just to easily reach the three here and then go over to the five with my pinky. So on the major arpeggio, I don't really have to move my hand much. Well, we wanna create that same, uh, that same idea with the minor arpeggio, right? We wanna to get to a place where we don't have to move our hand that much. And so if I start with my pointer finger, I can do root and then I can grab that flat three right here with my pinky. So you have root right there. And then I can take my ring finger and it's right over the five. So I have one, flat three, five. 
octave again, right? Because we have that same five and octave as we did from the major. So when you start with your ring finger on a minor arpeggio, it's all just right under your hand. You don't have to move at all. If we were to start again with our middle finger on the root note, now it's a quite a stretch to grab that flat third, especially with my pointer finger. So I'm probably sliding my hand up and then and I'm definitely sliding my hand to get to the fifth because I still, my longest stretch, I can't get to the fifth yet. I still have to move. So there is a slide when I, when I, you know, start with my, uh, with my middle finger versus starting with my pointer finger. So there you go. So our minor arpeggio, just our standard minor equals one flat three. That little B actually means flat. So, uh, and five. So one flat three, five is our minor arpeggio. So from there, you're probably asking, what is a minor seventh? This is going to be the last arpeggio we're going to learn today. And just like when we added a seven to the major arpeggio to make it a major seven, we're going to add a seven to a minor, but it's not going to be the standard seven. It's going to be the flat seven, the one we added to the dominant. So we're going to go ahead and take this seven and go flat right here into our flat seven. If we highlight that now, so now what you have is you have one flat three, five, that's our standard. But now in, to make it a seventh, we're not gonna grab that regular seven because that's too happy. That's a major seven. Gets too happy. We gotta flat that thing down a half a step. Go one flat three, five, flat seven, root. And what's really cool about that chord is if you're learning your pentatonic scales, all of those notes are in the minor pentatonic. So if we're playing a C minor pentatonic scale, all of those notes, as a matter of fact, four of the five notes in the minor pentatonic scale live inside of that arpeggio. One, two, three, four. And here's the minor uh the minor pentatonic one two three four five so only that note doesn't exist in the arpeggio so here we go so let me clean up uh my neck here really quick to kind of make this a little clear so we're going to get rid of that flat three right there let's bring our frets and our strings back so this arpeggio is right here flat three five flat seven, one. So that shape right there is your minor seven arpeggio. This arpeggio is so powerful, once again, because it lives right inside of the minor pentatonic shape as well. So if you are playing something I can actually add just that one note back in because that one note in this uh, position right there, that is right there. That is that is your pentatonic shape right there. And as a matter of fact, you could add that note right there and one, that run right here. I'm getting into a different video about the pentatonic scales in this video, but that's a cool little tip. So there you go. The five arpeggio shapes you need to know know them, practice them for those my, uh, for those major shapes. I would recommend practicing them uh, in order, saying them out loud. So you would say major arpeggio. On that five to one, try to use your pinky to grab the five and the one. It makes it way more efficient when you're playing these, uh, but that would be major. And then you could go, okay, major seven. Dominant seven. Let's switch to minor. Now I'm gonna switch to my pointer finger on the root note. So now we have minor. And now I'm using my ring finger to bar across those two notes to grab both the fifth and the root note again. So I have minor and minor seven. And there you go, the five arpeggio shapes every bass player needs to know. Know them, practice, love them, learn them, know them. Remember, it's all movable. So we just did it in C, you wanna do all that 
in G, no problem. You could be here, start it here. You could start it here. Uh, G major. B major. No problem. Anywhere on the neck, this is going to work. I hope you had a good time. I hope you enjoyed yourself. I hope you learned something. With that, I'm B-Side, and we'll catch you next time.